Okay, so last time I made this. The first thing I'm going to do in terms of making this into a knife is to clean up all the forging surface so that I know exactly what I have to work with. Once the surface is clean, then I can start worrying about making sure the inner core comes out in the middle. Okay, so now I've cleaned up the surface, so I've removed all the metal that had to be removed anyway. Now it's time to see if the core comes out in the middle. Now I've already seen on this side that the core is coming out nicely. You probably can't see this, but if you hold it against the light, you can see where there's a welding boundary and where the middle core comes peeping. So on this side I think it's almost starting to come. But there's a relatively easy way to check this. Simply dip it in uh, ferric chloride and see what happens. Now with the 40 grit belt the etching will be very poor quality, but it'll be good enough for me to see what's happening. So, just give it a quick tip.
middle side. Starting to come. I'll switch to final grid belt now because this process, I don't know if you can see it in the light. Here you see a strip that's about three to four millimeters wide of wood coming out. And on this side, here at the tip, it's starting, but you can't really see it. So I'll take a finer grid belt, 120. That should also make the etching more visible. And with that, we should be able to see what we're doing. Starting to come out. Still need to remove. Some metal. Especially on this side. Let's see. Use an 80 grit belt now. Because I still need to remove some metal. Probably not that much anymore. I don't want to have big scratches that I need to send out. So now I can see that the wood score is exposed along the entire edge. A bit more here. So with that out of the way, I can shape the knife. Press it away further. I have to make this rounded. The tip I'm going to do after heat treatment because that gives me a bit more thermal mass to work with. Otherwise, it's hard to get the 
very tip hard enough and now I'm going to make the tang So this was a big problem. Now I'm going to cut incisions in the tank where the bolsters are going to be placed. I like to do this on the side of my 8 inch wheel because it gives me a convenient way to make a start before I take it to the files. I don't like removing large amounts of steel with a file. Okay, that's looking good. Final thing to do at this stage is to clean up the tank just a little bit until the taper runs to the place where the bolts are going to be. If I make it tapered from this end all the way to the bolsters, it's fairly easy to make bolsters that fit snugly. If this part is wider than this part, then logically the bolster has to fit the widest part and there will be a visible uh, gap here. So just a bit more trimming. Okay, so this is the result. 
I'm, I'm fairly happy with it. Of course, with a sand mine, the most difficult thing is to make sure that, that the core layer stays in the middle. You might think this is easy because all if you start out with a billet, all you do is hammer it flat. And you, at first, you might think, well, I just hammer it flat. So normally it should stay in the middle, but the problem is that every time you hit it with a hammer, there's a slight drawing motion as well. So if you hammer one side more than the other, then the core layer will become sloped or S-shaped or deformed in a number of possible ways, depending on just what your hammering technique is and how many times you hit which side. But this does seem to be okay. Now, the shape before heat treatment is uh, ready. Now I'm going to hand sand the blade to make sure that all the scratch lines from the maquette from the grinder are removed. Because removing them now is a lot easier than removing them after heat treatment. And since this is a, a kitchen knife, there's no reason to keep uh, a lot of steel on there that I have to remove later on. So now it's time for hand sanding. Okay, so I'm done with the sanding. As you can see, I've uh, removed the grinding lines mostly by using uh, sandpaper around the stick and then rubbing it back and forth across the blade. I didn't film this because this is extremely boring. It's probably as boring to watch as it is to do, but it's one of the things that you need to do if you want to make knives. Now, before I do heat treatment, I use a homemade chisel. It's barely worthy of the name, but okay. <coughs> to carve my mark in the blade. I've thought about doing this with a diamond burr or by etching but it just doesn't feel the same to me by using a chisel and hammering my mark into the blade I make it a work of me it's like it's, a, it's like the difference between using a stamp and using a pen to make a signature I do this with a glove on my left hand because one time I missed the chisel not good and of course I wear these because this makes an unholy noise oh and um, one thing because this is a rather thin knife well compared to a the tang of a razor anyway. I tap lightly to avoid displacing a lot of metal in one go because I found that if I do that if, if I hit hard and I make deep marks then uh, during quenching the blade will bend around here because of all the metal that was displaced cold.
Okay. This is looking good. And this is also looking good. Okay, ready for heat treatment. Okay guys, now for the fun part, it's time to do the heat treatment. So, this is my heat treatment oven. It's basically an, an, uh, an oven for baking ceramic. As a heat treatment oven for steel, it's too big, to be honest. It takes quite a while to get hot. But on the plus side, I also use it for annealing steel, so if I forced a large number of things, I can just stack them in there, disconnect the power, and leave it to cool overnight. It's well insulated, so if I leave it at 20 degrees, put in my steel, and let it cool down on its own, it'll take quite some time to drop below 700 degrees Celsius, of course. Now, this is my oven, it's currently 820 degrees Celsius. I'll basically put the steel in for a while, let it soak a bit, then I quench it in this bucket of corn oil. And that's it basically. I believe in low tech. So, I'm not sure how to best capture this on camera. One of the problems with this being a ceramic oven is that the door swings sideways instead of up. It would have been much easier, but well, it is what it is, as they say. It's my own fault. I basically bought it without doing tons of research, but it works. This way you can see what goes, what it looks like when it goes in the quench. It won't take ages to get to the right temperature because it's pretty thin. I'll check in a minute or two. I preheated the oil by uh, taking an old bar of steel, chunk steel that I had left, putting it in the oven and then quenching it and stirring it around. It's all very non-scientific. Well, there is science behind it. I mean, obviously heat treatment is an exact science in terms of temperatures and the cooling diagrams. In practical terms, heat treatment is mostly about repetition and reproducibility. Learning to see the color of the steel, learning by experience what soak times are to be used, how much normalization you need, how much annealing you need, what the correct temperature of the oil is. And basically, I got there by trial and error. to normalize it once, just for good measure. Take it out. 
cool uh, server. Just to verify that there are no dark spots hiding in the steel. If you take the steel out of the oven and you look at the blade servers, and as it is cooling down, you see dark blotches. That means that there's uh, a problem in the steel. Then one of the layers doesn't make contact with the other layers and cools down more rapidly. So you can see dark patches if the forge welding was not entirely correct. Uh, I hope you saw this. This looks quite good. <coughs> I normalized the steel a couple of times before I started working it to make sure that it wouldn't have any thermal effects that would bend it this way or that way. So it is not a real surprise that it stayed perfectly straight, but sometimes you can have that you take it out of the oven and it starts to pull a bit this way or that way. In that case, I have a mini anvil standing over there, and I'll take a, a little hammer and I just tap the base straight again. But I'd rather not do that at this stage because I spent time filing and grinding and polishing, well, not really polishing, but removing scratch lines. And if I have to start hammering it on an anvil, it means I have to redo part of my work on it. I'd rather not do that. It's getting there. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to take it out and punch it. And now I hope everything is still straight. I can fix it if it isn't, but all in all, I'd rather not. And it looks like we have a winner. Also, you see me stirring around. You have to be careful doing this. You really don't want steel to hit something at this point. I mean, if I would accidentally hit it against the door or the bucket or let it drop on the floor then uh, there's a high chance I would have two pieces blade which would be starting over uh, okay I don't know if you can see it clearly but yeah you can see that misty grey strip that's the wood score and the rest is oops the rest is uh, in Damascus and you can see here as well looking good and still I'm happy to say, it's, I don't know if you can see it, but it's that straight. You know, from time to time I drop something in this bucket, looking at it like this. It's usually not a problem in terms of breaking things, but it means I have to, have to fish a knife 
out of a bucket with 20 liters of oil which can be quite messy even using a magnet oh this is really Wait, is it? I'm happy. Yep. It's just close to show how easy it is for me to find something to be happy with. There's the steel left. So now I'm going to wrap this in aluminum foil and put it in a normal kitchen oven at 200 degrees celsius for an hour or two to temper it. <laughs> 